just keep hit just hit next here's our next screen it's you know just some more stuff to read about that you guys are already familiar with it um, here's what our home page looks like um, it, it's it basically this is where you're going to enter all the order information um, right now it's online meaning that you can use your database to pick up names and and, and what we put your customers in here all your seed information your bin information you can do that all in here and then this will communicate once it's loaded up so if I take out my Ethernet card we'll see this go to KSI out currently offline and then you're gonna get this guy to go on just flash once and it's kinda keeps going here but once you plug this back in Once that goes back in, it'll take a couple seconds, but then this will it'll show that um, it'll come back online, bring everything, all the information up. Um, now, what you want to do here is again, you can go to any screen, you can be anywhere. These are kind of the top menus. Once you hit this, you'll notice that green bar goes right underneath it, and then you have your sub menus right here. So if I'm at contact information, I, I can go back, and then no matter where I'm at, so for example, here's my screens. This shows the whole system here. Here's my tanks, one through four, and they're all online because they're, they're green. It's KSI data online. And when this is online, what that means is you're communicating with your database. So if you make a change to your tank it, by pressing the, the, on the tank, and then you hit 777, if you entered all your information in here, if I change something in here, like for example this preact, I'm going to clear out of there because we haven't done a preact yet. So right now there surely should be that information. So I hit clear, and then I hit exit. Right now it's communicating. This little hours glass is saying, "Hey, I'm talking to the database right now," and vice versa. Uh, but that's only going to happen when these things are online. If they're offline what you'll have is the HMI touch screen is right here and this represents the computer, the, the PLC that's inside. So when I go online, the information is going to go from this little box to the, to the computer. Now if I touch this right in the center there, the arrow flipped. So now if I go online, this tank forward information is going to come from what you put in there. So you know we can do that, go online. And that just means that the information that will populate this, it's the same right now, but if it was different, it would be coming from here into here. And very simply, you know, this is your, your M100, this is your motor 100 outside, and you can operate that in hand by pressing forward. So now it's running right now. You heard the starter go off. You know, that was forward, same for reverse. There's a reverse starter in here. So I go to auto. Now you'll see that there's kind of like, yeah, I'm falling. Hit reset. If you, by touching on the on, on this bit by this conveyor at any place on this white, you'll see this motor 100 setup. Conveyor start delay time is two seconds. And it, well, what does that mean? Well, you press the information. This conveyor will delay starting for this amount of time when it is automatically started by the system. If you don't want it to delay at all, then just hit you can, you can change to zero. Well, how do we change it? Just type right on there, and you can put zero. And now, as soon as the system starts, when I hit start, it'll kick on because I just started the system. Or I can put a delay in there. Conveyor stop delay time. You know, what does that mean? This conveyor will delay stop for this amount of time when it is running in automa automatic and it is automatically stopped by the system. Uh, basically, you know, it, conveyor stops so when the scale reaches its weight and it runs for however many more seconds you set it at, that's, wh that's what that is. Uh, global motor fault time, and this is usually for all the motors is three seconds. Uh, since you have all motor starters and no VFDs for your main conveyors, three seconds is plenty of time. Uh, if there's a VFD, usually they try to make it four or five seconds to give it a chance to ramp up and do its thing. Um, and then if you wanted, you could, you could set an alert. So, hey, how many hours do I want, do I want to be alerted if, 
if my underbin conveyor, which is the M100, hey, when that thing runs for five hours, I want you to alert me. How do I set that? Okay, well, I could just go in there, put in, you know, 10 hours, and then when this thing reads, when this thing gets to 10 hours of running, and right here you're at .09 hours, it'll give you a little information down here saying, hey, you've reached your, you know, for whatever. Service center. Service. Service. Exactly. So you can set that for whatever you want. I mean, it's totally up to you. That's just kind of the things that we've done. And again, you have this information here along most of those. So for example, we'll go to the scale page now, which you can access by, if you, got, if you can notice that, if I go to my tanks, I can go to my other tanks, I can keep going, or I can you know, go back to tanks one through four, now I'll go to my scale page. And on my scale page, it shows the M100 dumping into your M101, which is the guy that's coming through the, through the wall there. So if I want to start him, I can turn him on by hand. Now the 101, that's, that's what we call it, but that's on right now. So I can turn him off. Now, I'm going to purposely turn this guy off, and you notice it's red. When it's red, that means it's out of automatic. Auto is green. Off is red. Now that's important because when you're starting a job, let's say we go to our our homepage, if you did if you don't hit global auto, that M101 is going to stay off, and your 100 is going to have a bunch of seed that's piling up out there because it's not an automatic mode. So. Unless, I mean, if you're working on something by hand and you're just running it out, cleaning it, just make sure you hit global auto before you start your job. Before you hit master start, hit that. And now we're going to go back to our scale page and our M101 should, is, is green now because it, it went through and it made it an auto. Before you start a job, hit the global auto. If you're not sure, hit it. Uh, but, I mean, if you're standing here all day doing job after job, you don't have to keep rehitting it because you didn't do anything different. But if you, once you stop everything and maybe run one or clean it out, who knows what, just make sure that you hit that global auto. Or just when you exit, you know, instead of hitting off, just for example, I turn it on, I can hit auto and it's going to go off because it's not a program running. And then I exit out and that's that. Now again, if I touch anywhere on there, I can set my, set my uh, uh, standards the way I want them to be set. Um, right here, if you notice, I touched this little little gray bar here it's the knife get air pressure fault time is set at 10 seconds so right now the, the air pressure set at 100 psi that's where you want to have it set because you got a lot of weight on those bins out there and once you crack open that manual gate the only thing remaining is our air gate you need 100 psi to really move that thing effectively once it gets down to 60 it's going to be very hard and you know painstaking for that thing to move but I have an alarm set so that if, if on my air pressure gauge back there on that air manifold, if it gets to 60 for 10 seconds, it's going to start bleeping. The light will flash and you'll see, you know, low air pressure, either there's a leak somewhere or, uh, you know, check the air manifold or, you know, one of the airlines is bleeding out there. That's, that's probably something like that. Uh, and then, you know, most as with most everything, here's your knife gate. This is your gate you can open it by hand and that was for the scale and again if I hit auto it closes you can either hit off or auto but again if you use auto or if you just hit the off button it's going to be red you want to make sure you hit global auto so that during your program it will work the right way if I left this guy in red if I hit close and exited and I didn't hit global auto my program would be waiting for seat all day long but because he was in off that scale is not open so, and then we can go to our loadout, or we can go to our treater page, which shows the treater and all the different pumps. Uh, and I'll let Steve Stoller explain a little bit more about the details per se. But you know, as you've got the, the pump set up right here, um, your pumps can go in forward, reverse. We have them set up to do that. Um, and, and then you, here's all your treater uh, things. Well, I like to go to the loadout page because this shows the scale unloads into this 102 motor, uh, conveyor and then it, it goes right in here into your treater. Now this green bar is what you have to watch because it says divert right next to it. It's not diverting, it's going through the treater and if I hit the divert um, button then it moves. And it, always follow where this arrow goes. Uh, 
kind of pay no attention to that button, if you will, because if you get confused, you know, don't worry about that. Just follow this button. Also, on your home page, there's this, this part of your order, you can choose to have the auto treat enabled, which is treating the seed. If you decide not to do that and disable it, you, you hear the valve move. It does that on purpose so that you're not stuck where you forgot to change that, but you wanted to treat, but it's in the divert mode. If you treat it, now it's going to go through the treater. So anyway, that's, that's our loadout page right here. Here's your atomizer, or the seed wheel control, atomizer control. Um, and then right here is our discharge conveyor, which is this guy sitting underneath here. Um, right now, it shows it's going into this Friesen hopper. So I hit that, and that's the kind of the remainder of the seed goes in here, and then here's your 106, which we're going to be controlling manually in hand. And I just hit hand and the motor starter started up, so we know that's once it gets hooked up, it should be running fine. And uh, also on this hopper, there is a low level and high level that you'll see when they get activated. If I went and put my hand on that low level, you'd see low level come up, which would indicate, yes, there's seed in there. Uh, at the same time, there's a high level, which will in turn, if that gets tripped, it's going to shut off everything before it, so no more seed is going in that hopper. Same thing happens with your 102. If we go back to our uh, loadout page, and we can we press this Friesen hopper, now we see that. Go back to our loadout page. This 102 has the same thing. There's a high-level sensor. If this high-level sensor gets tripped, it shuts off this 102 and the scale gate closes because it's a warning, hey, the seed's about to go over. Now, on our scale, if you hit the scale, anywhere you hit that, you'll see this big window pop up. Now this is important because it kind of shows the, the scale cycle of, of, it, of it getting all of its seed, and what's in green is what's going to run, and then what's not is when it turns red, it's off, when it's green, it's on. Uh, a scale batch capacity, uh, that thing's got 15,000 pounds, 300 units or 350? I want to say it's 350. That's 1750. Let, let's just keep it at 15,000 for now. And if you ever do a load that big, and it, you know, then you'll know. And then the batch must fill in 500 seconds. And that's just kind of a slow scale. If, if you're running, basically, if you're running low in your bin, if you're running low on seed, and you call for an order that there's more in your order than there is out there, what's going to happen is your scale is going to keep waiting and waiting and waiting, and a timer started that at 500 seconds is saying, hey man, remember, you got to go check out there. I think you're out of seed. Um, that's what this is for, and you can set these. Uh, and that's kind of what this has to do, your order complete tolerance. This is saying that if you were low on seed, you ran out of seed, but you were within 75 pounds of finishing that order, the computer will call it done. Rather than having to stop everything, go refill it, redo the order, that's kind of, uh, that's what this is for. And you can change this amount to whatever you like. I mean, I'll leave, kind of the standard factories, what we preset it with is this. Uh, and then there's your clean out time. Your clean out time is when your scale reads the amount of weight that you want and everything is okay, that's how long does that, the, the 101, the underbin and the, the scale fill conveyor, how long those run after that. Uh, and, and it actually calculates this, we're going to do this pretty soon, is I'll run you through the pre-act and how that works. Uh, we can do that next. Uh, your scale empty tolerance is five pounds. Uh, because your scale is in increments of five pounds anyway, once your scale reads five, it pretty much calls it a done deal. You know, that, that's enough. Your scale empty time, but then it gives you five more seconds before that gate closes to get all the seed out. Um, dis turn discharge conveyor off after 20 seconds. So if you're, and this is, if you're doing an auto batch job, and your seeds coming down, the, you know it's diverted. It's not getting treated. When that scale reads zero, this 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 conveyor will run for 20 seconds. You can make that 50 seconds. You can make it 10 minutes. I mean, whatever you want. Um, that's what that's 